Hello everyone. We're at Fisher Row Harbour in Musselburgh, you know, just on the outskirts of Edinburgh today. We're at this wonderful harbour here, it's, it's so pretty. Uh, when we arrived, uh, the tide was completely down, but we've been faffing around in the car for a bit, and we're squeezing out paint, so all sorts of things. And in that time, the tide's come up quite a long way. So we're going to be doing something different today, uh, which you'll find out in a minute. But first of all, we've got to find the scene, and I suspect it's round the other side of the harbour. So we'll, we'll go around there first and have a look. Fresh breeze, that's really windy. Great, well I'm all set up and as you can see the change is oil painting. So I love oil painting as well. It's a really windy day today so it's going to be a bit of bother. I love oil painting as well as doing watercolours. Um, they're both equally great, the two, 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 two wonderful subjects. That's my tripod falling over, that gives you an idea of the wind today. But the, the two subjects are equally brilliant. Uh, watercolour is fantastic and so is oil. Uh, they're just different really. Watercolours are light and airy uh, and oils are, are rich and, and heavy sort of paintings but both great mediums. It's so windy today that I've, I'm afraid of the tripod actually falling off. Uh, my camera tripod just fell over but there's no camera on it so that was lucky. So what I'm going to do to weigh it down is to get my, my bag my, or my, with my art supplies. I'm going to put it over the top and give it a little bit extra weight on it. So that should do the job and hopefully it won't, won't fall over. That's good, that's perfect. Great, so this palette here, this is a brand new palette. Uh, Tanya gave it to me for my birthday recently, so I'm quite looking forward to using it. Um, it's, I've had a, done a, one or two little adjustments to it, which I'll talk about in another video. So this, this is, a, this is as, it, as it is. I've carried it down here so the paint is vertical, so the paints have slid down to the bottom. But that's fine, I don't mind that. So uh, it, it looks like a nice palette and um, I'm looking forward to using it. Uh, so it's a 10 by 8 board, so it's going to be quite a quick painting. And the style of which I'm going to paint is going to be interesting too. So I'm hopefully going to paint it quite thickly and richly. That's the, that's the style of painting that I really enjoy in painting. And the, the impressionistic style, not too dissimilar from my watercolour painting, which is also like that too. Uh, so first of all, I get the sketch done of it. I'll run through a whole detail of my, of my gears uh, later, but usually I use a big French easel uh, for my outdoor painting, but I've, I've changed because I want it to, I want to have the a similar or the same setup for my oils as I do with my watercolour, so that's why I'm using the tripod now. Anyway, let's get on with the drawing of it quickly. I've done my drawing and I'm painting onto an MDF board. It's this one, this particular one is four millimeter, not the normal thickness I use. I usually use uh, six millimeter, so uh, slightly different. It's primed with acrylic primer, uh, just pretty standard stuff, artist stuff. And, and I've toned the board a bit just to knock away the, the whiteness. It's much easier to paint if it's, if it's on a grayer surface. So I've just washed it over quickly with the odds and ends of old uh, oil paint really so nothing special there um, again very similar to uh, watercolor you, you've got to make a start in it and uh, where that is 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 uh, is something to really think about but there's a lot of more there's a there's a lot more process in oil painting with with watercolor it's open the tin and you're almost gone but this I have to use a lot of these first to mix all the colors in preparation so it takes about 10 minutes to mix all the colours that I'm wanting uh, and pot them into little piles on the, ca on, the, on the glass surface here. So I'll start getting on with the mixing process now. I'm just going to mix the basic colours initially. So a few, a few blues, uh, greeny blues. Uh, that's, so that was Viridian. Uh, that's a bit of cobalt blue. Mix them together a bit. You become very, very good at mixing paint on a, on a palette after a while. The, these, the, they become like, like a master of chopsticks almost, really, really mixing the colours quickly. And the, more you, the more you do, the better you get. Painting oils is so individual. Uh, there are so many different styles that you can have in painting oil paints. 
Uh, you can have thin paint, you can have thick paint, um, layers of paint, one layer of paint. And what we're going to do today is really one layer of paint, and it's what's, what's called um, a la prima, uh, which is a French name, and it me means at first go. So it'll be done in one go. Great. The colours that I use aren't particularly extensive in oil painting, but very similar to watercolour. You don't need that many colours really. And um, these are the colours here on the palette. It's a very windy day today, so hopefully you can hear me. So it, it starts from left to right. So that's raw umber, indigo, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, raw sienna, thalo blue, cobalt blue, viridian, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and a little bit of alizarian crimson and some uh, white here. So you can see I've largely mixed up many of the colours that I need. Not, not perfectly because uh, from these pools of paint I'll then, I'll then mix up the, the colour that I think it's going to be. So, but that, that's largely it and the next part of it is really getting into the, uh, the painting side of it. Great. I do use a little bit of medium to begin with and this is a combination of turpentine and oil. Um, I, I, use, I use genuine turpentine. Uh, a lot of people use uh, zested sort of thing and because it doesn't smell as much and re for reasons like that, but it doesn't really make much sense to me because you're outdoors anyway, so that, that breeze can, can disappear, or that, or that's, all the smells can disappear. So I'm going to start with the, with the top and I'm, I'm going to change it around a bit as well. I'm not going to paint it as I see it. Uh, a lot of it is, but some of the colorization of it I'm, I'm not going to do. I'm going to make it a little bit more impressionistic. So, um, introducing colours which aren't necessarily there. Uh, okay, so I'm going to start with the sky. I often start with the sky, but you don't have to start with the sky in oil paints because the water isn't dripping down. One thing with, uh, with painting in oils, you have to have a, a lot more brushes as well. The, the, the brushes that you have, if you, you, need, you, you need lots of brushes because you, you need a one, that's one brush for the use of blue and another brush for brown. So you need lots of different brushes and um, that's what makes it a little bit messier. Okay, so again just, just sort of blocking in really, blocking in the colours, making it a little bit varied. I'm going to make it a, a bit of a stormy day as well, I think. That's the fun of painting, really. You don't, have to, you don't absolutely have to paint it as you see it. Paint it a little bit more varied if you wanted to. Um, should have changed brush then, because now, now I've got two, bru two blue brushes. <laughs> Never mind. Right. Okay, so Trying to keep, trying to vary it, trying to get some interesting colours, and I, I like I like thick paint as well. I like I like the paint to I like to be able to see the paint. Anybody can see that? That's really nice and thick there. Changing. Really thickly placed on. Right. Now we're going to come down into the into the sea a bit. There. And there. And then into the harbour. Nice greens we're going to have into the harbour. Like now I need to get, need to paint the um, the the scene of this Edinburgh behind in the distance. So it's a little spit of land that's coming out. So I'll place here like that into the distance. And then it goes right across into Fife on the other side of the, uh, the Firth of Forth. I think I got that right this time. That's the further four. That's that's five in the distance there. Okay. So now it's time to paint the harbour wall. So I mix a little bit of, of brown on that side, but I'll bring it over here. 
had lots of different colours in that wall. A bit of blue, maybe. So there's, there's the harbour wall, top of the harbour wall coming in. blues a bit as you get the walk the, the surface for where people walk pathway I like to keep it nice and textural on the thick I love I love thick paint in oil it's some, something really attractive to my mind the reflection of the sea at the bottom so it makes a nice green you can see, I mean, got a bit around the other side as well. There we go. Some stairs coming down over there too, which are, which are sort of a bluey brown. So that's where the indigo comes in. Well, in, indigo is my is my go-to black almost. Uh, it's it's a slightly blue-toned black. And I, I, I like it. That's the stairs in the distance. Right, okay, then back to the yellow brush for the that part there, and then we've got the other side of the harbour coming in this side. Okay, make the harbour entrance a little bit bigger. When you tone a board as well, it, it it sort of helps you. It's a sort of um, it. it it's it, when it's really bright. It's quite difficult to cover it in one go. So, if you tone it to a greyer colour, you, you've you've helped yourself. You've sped up the process a little bit more. Okay, so back to the harbour wall. This side of the harbour wall is in a bit of shadow. So I'm going to introduce, make it a little bit darker. So again, to keep it simple, the, uh, I'm trying to paint in a broad way, always, I always do that, I love painting in an overall way, so I'll try and paint everything and then I'll refine it more and more. But get it down is, is my, my mantra for painting. A lot of reflections. Right, so what I'm going to do now is uh, start putting the boats in. So, made a couple of other brushes. There's a lovely blue boat in the bottom right. I don't know if you can see that in the distance there. But pan up and have a look at it. And that's what's going to give the painting a little bit of light. So it's it's a nice it's a nice little colour there. I've got to be careful because I don't want to make it the same colour as the sea. Anyway, if, you, if it's the same colour as the sea, you just won't see it. So there's a nice blue, two-tone blue coming in there. Then it gets darker the other side. And a lighter base to it where it meets the, the water. side. There we go. Quite a complicated thing, but I, I, I really don't want to go into the complication of this. Uh, I, I, want, I want to keep it simple. When you paint in oil, um, the, the, the mess spreads. I, I remember some of the, some paintings I've done in my life have been quite big. There's one painting that was 24 feet wide, which I painted once. Quite enjoyed it, but what a mess. Such a messy business.
very different from watercolor. Water, watercolor is so tidy, and so that's what that's one of the pleasures of watercolor. You don't you don't get mucky on it, not in the same way. Okay. So I'm dipping in. If you, if you can have a look at the palette, I'm, I'm dipping into all sorts of different colors, and I'm finding I'm finding a, a new patch. So I, I'm looking. For, so I dip in, then I find a new patch on the palette, a clean patch, and that's where I do the little color mixing there. So that I'm just trying to find some some whites so to to darken down. So I'm going to paint the, the the whites in shadow. So you can see, I'm making lots of little pools of color. You can hear all the rattling of the mast in the in the background. That's the sound that's everywhere. Every harbour has that noise. I don't know whether I like it or not. It's, a, it's quite a racket. That's just the beginning of that boat there. So I'm just going to get the basis of it down and then I'll move on to the next part because I don't, I don't want to stay in one place too long. I've roughly indicated where the boat is now. Now I've got to bring the sea up to the boat. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to paint the sea in first because I wanted to, I, I wanted to, I didn't want to paint the boat over the sea. So I'm going to paint the boat and then the sea around it. And then you can see it a little bit more. Lots of colours, foreground. Great thickness of paint. So back to the wall on that side, so finding my lumps of colour, that's the yellows that are close to, the, to what I'm looking at. Mixing those in. And then the actual wall goes around and then comes back around here, top of it. Going to add the, the top of the wall again. It sort of comes around the corner. People walk. <laughs> so windy today. I can barely keep the brush still on the board, on the canvas on the board. Okay, that's that part done. Okay, I'm going to move over from the right and go to the left-hand side of the picture, and I'm going to start with the boat on in the far distance. There's a, there's a boat that's moored against the, uh, the, uh, the harbour wall. There he is. Just indicating it. <laughs> if I can, it's so windy I can... There we go. And the top of the little boat here. Oh, <laughs> that was supposed to be a few centimetres right at that. Or a few millimetres right. Painting outdoors, eh? Sometimes it's nice to get back to the studio as well. It's going to be interesting in winter time. Winter time is always the hard time for, for uh, landscape painters or outdoor painters. Okay, that's the harbour wall coming behind the boat. And then it's going to stretch across here like that. There's a, a white boat in the front, a, a yacht. So I'm going to pop that in quickly. So I'm going to find my white patches on the, my panel, on my palette. Start mixing there. So it, it, the, the hull of the of the, uh, of the yacht is in shadow, so it's, it's not really white. It's a sort of grey colour. It's coming in. It's coming in here. So that's the greyness of it. 
has got a blue side of the boat which will give it its shape. Uh, so that's a bit of cobalt blue really, and mixed with a little bit of phthalo. Windows. All right. And then the top of it, which is a little bit whiter, lighter in colour. Whiter and lighter. You don't always have to paint big with, uh, with paintings. Sometimes a little intimate painting is, is just as fun and pleasurable to look at. Although my paintings will get quite a lot bigger in due course. Painted outdoors in winter time, which is going to be brutal. Especially in Scotland. Lights catching that bit there. To the boat. There we go. Right, just the basic form of it. There's a second boat there, just behind it, which I'm going to put in, and that will hopefully silhouette this first boat out. It's not much. Can't really see it that much. It's a dark bit of blue. The side of the boat here, so that's a nice sort of colour accent there. And it's got a canopy as well. Oh, <laughs> that was a gust. Okay, and then we have the the mast, which I'm going to paint in cobalt blue. So it's got the blue the blue section of the mast, which I'm going to pop in here, like that. The other one's got one coming in too. And then I'm going to put the, the mast coming out, which is a silver mast, which I'm going to paint the silver this time because it is, it, it's, it's a totally different tone, so that will, that will be fine. If I, can, if I can put my hand on the, <laughs> you see the wind coming in, whoa, it's going in, whoa! <laughs> That was a, that was my that was almost my stuff on the floor then. It's trying to lift off. Oof, that was good. Right, come back again. Let's get my <laughs> windy conditions like this are fun, eh? With a picture like this, it's, there is a rush on today with it because the weather's so bad. You just don't know what's going to come around the corner. Big clouds to the left of me. And you can see the wind is picking up, so there's obviously a storm coming. So I get trying to get the windows in. Boat here. I can. It's almost like you need a maul stick today to be accurate with it. Add a few more bits of paint to the sky. Try to get the monumental nature of the clouds coming in. So uh, something sort of quite big, really thick, thickly placed in. Give it the feeling of bellowing clouds.
Yep, and then it's underneath it as well. So I'm laying thick paint on thick paint. Okay, I'm just going to slowly go and, and add little, little bits of detail here and there just to bring the life of it into the picture. It's these bits of detail which makes you understand the picture a bit. There's a rail there coming in and there's the, the tide is sort of lapping against here and here. Oh, and then there are some little boys up at the top, where I guess the ships are tied to. And now we go into a few details of the boat. There's a bit of yellow on the top. Quite nice for them. Right, really difficult to be accurate with anything today because everything's moving. Yeah, that continues down to the side of the boat. It's quite good because it gives a contrast from the blueness. And it goes dark on the other side, so it introduces a little bit of red and maybe a bit of burnt sienna to the yellow because the other side is in a shadow. And you have a, an arm. It's very similar to my watercolors, really. At the end, at the end of my watercolor, I do a little bit of pencil work, and this this feels a little bit like that too. Now I'm going to move over to the other side of the painting and try and add some details around here. So a few touches of so that's the the mast or the aerials. The boat. Well, the rain's really going down now. When you're a landscape painter, a plein air landscape painter, you've got to take the rough with the smooth. Sometimes it's a wonderful day, beautiful day, perfect conditions, and other days it's, it's more like that. <laughs> oh wow, it's really moving now. Okay, let me get, trying to get the base of the bottom of the boat in. That's good. Right, I'm going to brace myself and go. Oh, <laughs> there's going to go out there like that. I try to do it straight, it's just too windy. And then another one comes in here into that boat. So I'll put a few of the buildings in the background, <laughs> they're quite interesting. In the far distance, there's some sort of harbour, um, some big flats, which I'll, I'll put here, just, just to indicate a little bit of Edinburgh in the background. And then maybe some of the, some of the bits of, um, maybe in black, the anchors going into the water. Coming in there like that. Give that. So, trying to get the shade. That, well, that's the shady side there. <laughs> it's supposed to be that way a bit, but as well as okay, the wind blew it. Blew my hand. That. Maybe I'll introduce uh, a little yacht in the distance coming coming through. So just a hint of that. So that's that's done it in, in, in front of that little dark patch just to bring it out. The front rail sail in. Okay. And then a dark bit of the hull. Okay. 
Just going to add a little, just the last couple of touches to give the, the clouds a little bit of shape. And we're going to call it a day. So that just to give it a bit of base. More drama in the sky. And that's it. <laughs> that's all I'm going to do today. So there we have the painting. As I say, it's uh, 10 by 8 inches. So not very big. Certainly lots going on in the painting. And uh, I don't know whether you can see the, the thickness of the paint in there, which I, I love thick paint. There's something about it that really interests me. There we go, going all the way around it quickly. And coming back again. Yeah, so uh, I've enjoyed that, but as I said earlier, it was a challenge. It really was a challenge. And uh, here's, here's the scene there. There we go, and here's Tanya <laughs> holding. She's had a hard time today, but there she is. <laughs> oh, <do> my best. <laughs> there we go, and back to the painting. So uh, quite a quick painting, and uh, painted in uh, painted in really trying conditions today. The, the wind was uh, the, the almost collapsed my my easel a couple of times there, so I was. I was dropping all the paintbrushes to grab the easel to make sure it didn't fall to the floor completely. So that was a challenge. That was a challenge. And that's probably where the French easel is better than this type of easel in these gusty winds. So I think it's worked out. It's, it's worked out pretty well. And again, the phrase that I like more than any other phrase in art is that there's nothing interesting in perfection. And um, that sort of goes along with this painting too. So. It, it, it has a nice feel to it. It's got lots of colour to it. Um, well, that's it, it's got lots of colour to it. My wife let go of the tripod there and I thought to myself, oh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> not in these winds. Um, so there we have it. So it's been a fun to do. Uh, a, a bit of a trial today, but uh, I, I've enjoyed it and I enjoyed the end. And I feel proud of myself that I actually got through it. So that's a good thing. One of the nice things about painting out of doors. So I hope you enjoyed that too. And if you did like it, and uh, just put a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. And uh, until next time, thanks very much and goodbye.